Unit 4, Phase 3, The First Gentile Believers, and the Expansion Continues. So looking at Phase 2, we talked about how the gospel went from Jerusalem, which was Phase 1, into Judea and Samaria, which was Phase 2. And so now we're going to really see how the focus begins to shift towards the Gentiles and how the Spirit is really leading Gentile believers to Christ. And so this is, uh, Phase 3 goes from Acts 9.32 through Acts 12, 24. And one of the key things that we see here during this phase is how the missionary center of activity shifts from coming out of Jerusalem to now going up to Antioch. So we had shown this uh, previously, but just to review, we're now going to see how the focus of missionary activity is going to shift from being down here in Jerusalem to now being up into New Testament Asia Minor. And so Antioch is right there on the map, and you can see how it's right there at the launching point to go into, uh, which is modern-day Turkey, Uh, then it was known as Asia Minor. So if we zoom in a little bit, we can see how Antioch right there is just poised to be uh, the launching point, and that's exactly what it's going to become. So before we get into phase three, though, let's talk about some of the key ideas that we see here. Again, we really see this idea of the Holy Spirit leading the charge. So now we have Saul, who is going to be now known as the Apostle Paul, he is an, a bold missionary for the growth of the early church, for the growth of the church, and for preaching the truth of who Christ is and what he has done. And the Spirit is going to now be the leader, and Paul is going to, to be the follower, and he's going to one that's going to advance into new territory uh, to preach the, the message of Christ. So we'll see that there. And, and we also see how um, the, this theme starts to emerge where this idea of nothing can hinder it, and that's referring to the work of the Spirit. So it's just almost as though as we read the book of Acts, the Spirit, we see the sovereignty and the rulership of God at work through the Spirit. We see that, we see that like this is going to happen uh, because God has willed it to happen, and He is the one really making it happen. And then third, we see how this phase shows the tr- real true transition Uh, away from Jerusalem up to Antioch, and really how the focus going forward throughout the rest of the book of Acts is uh, the Gentiles. And so we're going to see how all of that plays out, because there's some problems and some some, uh, cultural uh, challenges and battles that come from this particular um, focus and how that plays out we're going to look at. So let's get back into the timeline. So now, as phase three, the good news now includes the Gentiles. And that's one of the things that was prophesied long ago, and we're now seeing it come to pass right now. And we see actually the focus shift back to Peter, um, who is still full of the Spirit's power. We see this at the end of chapter nine. And Peter is now out of Jerusalem, and he is preaching, and he is actually healing in in cities of Lydda and Joppa, which we can see where those kind of fall. They are um, in in Judea and Samaria. So we see Peter, Peter is now out of Jerusalem. He's preaching, and what happens is important because in chapter ten we see this this long account of this man named Cornelius, who's a Gentile, but he is a leader, and Peter actually ends up leading him and his family to Christ. And it's such a significant thing that we see Acts, almost all of Acts chapter 10 covering it. And then Peter returns back to Jerusalem and recounts the experience a second time and receives all kinds of resistance and flack for it. And we see that in the early parts of chapter 11. And this is where this theme of, of nothing can hinder it, uh, one of the places that pops up. So if we just kind of pause the timeline and just look at the text for a second, Acts eleven seventeen says, if therefore God, this is Peter now saying this, if therefore God had, had gave them, the Gentiles, the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? And they, and when they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God saying, then God has granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. See, this was a very tough idea for the Jews to really grasp, even though it was talked about in the Old Testament how it was going to be expanded to the Gentiles, prophets like Isaiah and others. It was still the, there was still this elitist mindset that many of the Jews had that they, that they were favored by God. And of course, Paul's going to deal with that in the book of Romans when we get there. So going back to the timeline, Peter goes back to Jerusalem. He recounts the experience about Cornelius to the Jews in Jerusalem. He receives all kinds of resistance. But in the midst of this, the church at Antioch is now growing. And so we have this new leader, the Apostle Paul. He meets up with a friend named Barnabas, and they are now up in Antioch, but they want, they hear that there is a need. 
down in Jerusalem and in Judea. And so they come down in Acts 11, uh, 19 through 30, to give aid to Judea. And, and it's at this time that there is uh, a, a Herod, again, is now persecuting the church um, with an intense passion again. So you have the, the Herod at this time who is, who is going after the church. It's not Paul, it's Herod. And this is where um, James, um, John's brother, dies as part of this persecution. And so one of the things that I had shown you real briefly previously I want to return to, and that is kind of the timeline of New Testament events. And we're going to return to this a number of times, but just to kind of see where we are from a timeline perspective, we had actually looked at uh, in AD 33, so this is the same year, of course, of the as the death and resurrection of Christ, but we also, from a new early church perspective, we're going to now look at the events and kind of how they fall in order. So we saw the whole, the Holy Spirit at Pentecost in Acts chapter two. We saw the stoning of Stephen and the conversion of Paul. That actually took place in uh, right around thirty five, forty four. Uh, was when uh, James actually ends up dying during this uh, Herodian persecution. And so that's kind of where we are at right here in Acts chapter 12 on the timeline. So Herod is going after the church, and we see in Acts uh, later in Acts 12, he specifically targets Peter, who is the leader of the church, and he arrests him. And this is where the angel frees him uh, in Acts 12, uh, thir- uh, 33 through 18. And it's interesting, we see uh, almost immediately after that, that God strikes Herod dead and the church continues to thrive. And there's this interesting um, kind of contrast of, of, of the summary verse at the end of, of phase three, because it's almost as though the same theme is relevant again nothing is going to stop this mission. And we see this in Acts 12, 23, where it says, then immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God and he was eaten by worms and died. One of my favorite verses in the New Testament, I'm not going to lie. Kind of weird. It's so funny, but but it just it's, it's all about the rulership of God. And we see the very next verse is kind of our summary verse for phase three and how, oh, how it contrasts against this one. And it simply says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. So nothing is going to stop this mission that is being led by the Spirit. We see these kind of these main ideas again. The Spirit is the leader. Nothing is going to hinder it. And now we're going to see the transition uh, up to Antioch is really, really taken hold now. And that's where we're going to go in our next unit, really kind of see where the story goes from here. And so in unit five, we're going to look at phase four, and we're going to now really see the Apostle Paul become the leader of the missionary initiative. So let's hop over to Unit 5 as we examine Phase 4 into Asia Minor, and we look at Paul's first missionary journey.